having business before the Honorable the Supreme Court of the United States are admonished to draw near and give their attention. The court is now sitting. God save the United States and this Honorable Court. We will now hear the case of Bell v. Etwamba School Board. Are the counselors ready? Yes, Your Honor. May it please the court. My name is Zane Sheets, the, court, the petitioner before this court today. The following issues are before this court. Taylor Bell has been wrongfully punished by a school for simply exercising his First Amendment rights and his dissatisfaction for the coaches serving in his school. The threats made are not real and the coaches face no real danger, simply just a rap. While the rap may be vulgar, nobody can deny that it isn't, it was simply to express his strong views about his dissatisfaction, much like Cohen did with his jacket. The video also caused no substantial disruption to the school staff or the students as it could not be accessed during school hours on campus. Facebook was blocked, no way for the students to do it besides cell phones. Therefore, can't really blame this kid. He wasn't telling his friends, hey, go watch this video that I made. He didn't send it to any teachers, any students, simply on his Facebook page. Counselor, correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't uh, Facebook use friends and he shared it directly with his friends? Several yes, of them his, attended his, the county school? Yeah, his pre-approved friends. So he did, in fact, share the video with his friends. Yes, but he wasn't they sending it to them school. during school. He, he is not really sharing. It's just putting it on his page. He didn't directly send him a link to that person. It's just on his page. Not everybody gets a notification. And it's also they, on a public YouTube page. Yes, that's correct. So you don't think this could affect the teacher's reputation at all? Well, the thing is, is the information in his rap about the the coaches is he got it from the girls themselves that felt like they were being sexually harassed by these gym teachers. Now, so are you telling us that we expect you to have the same journalistic integrity for one bell compared to an actual news such as CNN or MSNBC? Well, obviously, since Bell is only a high school student, you can't hold him to the type of standard as, let's say, CNN, Fox. So we should just give him leeway to make open libel against? Not people? necessarily, because. These coaches are teachers, and since they're coaches, they're like they're more of a public figure. They're more open to criticism because, let's say he is a coach, you will see him in the newspaper more often than let's say an Earth and Space Science teacher. So they are more open to criticism simply because they are in that position to be in the news more often. But is saying that someone is committing like a sexual act with a student the same thing as criticism with a sport? Not necessarily, but it's just not really focused on like. With the sport aspect, just he is a coach, and therefore he is tied in with more ways to simply get his name out there, and thus making him more open to criticism. Would this materially and substantially disrupt the school itself, even though we're in outside of the school? No, I don't think so, because like I said earlier, he wasn't sending it to his classmates. He wasn't saying like, "Hey, you gotta watch this rap that I made." He didn't send it to any of the teachers. Like I said, he just put it on YouTube and Facebook. Was the school able to access it though? Not on Facebook, but YouTube, yes. So it could be seen during school? Yes. Bell make remarks such as, I'm gonna hit you with my Ruger. Um, how do you think the coach feels about this kind of threat? I mean, I can't really say on how the coach feels, considering that's, that's what the coach feels. Would and you I'm not really that sure. As a threat? What? Would you consider that as a threat? You see, in the in the context, it depends on the context. Like in this context, it's a rap and it's political hyperbole. You're, it's an art form. Um, rap songs uh, usually talk a lot about killing. And uh, what makes what makes uh, this different is that he's actually uh, he, and he's trying to report the truth. Like it's an art form. Like rappers all the time will say. They're not about like that life, but they still rap about it. And with this threat, he just said, going to get a pistol down your mouth, pow, is very different from, let's say if he said, I'll put a pistol in your mouth tomorrow. Can you said these threats were substantial then? In that he would willingly do it? Or no. Is there anything? No, it's saying like, anybody can just say something, but it doesn't mean they have to act on it. I'd say if like, he said, I'm going to do it tonight, or like, I will, I will do it tomorrow, is very different. Because then he gives a time and date, and then, too, he didn't say it to the teacher at all. He had made no previous threats 
to the to these coaches. And since he posted on Facebook initially, you can uh, infer that he really didn't mean for the coaches to see it, considering he has he has pre-approved friends who can see the video. And then just could the coach see it on the public site YouTube? Yes. Yeah, I'd like to uh, draw similarity to the song Kim, is it? but it's a very uh, vulgar song. He talks about killing his wife, and they made no distinction on whether it was a substantial threat or not because it's simply a rap. It was just it's an art form. It's a way to ex express emotions without actually carrying out the things. That's all the time you have. Thank you, Council. We will take the matter under advisement. May it please the court, my name is Lauren Landor, the counsel for the respondent before this court today. The following issues are before this court. Considering the facts of the case, Taylor Bell, a high school senior at Itawama Agricultural High School, located in Mississippi, allegedly heard some of his classmates say they were sexually assaulted by two physical education teachers. Upon hearing this distressing news, Bell did not report it to the police or file a complaint with the school board, yet he created and posted a vulgar rap to his public Facebook account. Later on in the case, Bell admitted to posting the content for the purpose of reaching his school community to raise awareness of the two teachers he accused of sexual misconduct. There was no evidence found to incriminate the two teachers. Taylor Bell or any student does not have the right to defame, to threaten, or to incriminate without the due process of law any teacher across the United States. To begin, both physical education teachers were defamed enough to immensely affect their jobs and future. Without any evidence at the time, Bell does not have the right to create a serious accusation that will affect someone's life in a serious and negative way. The teachers that were stated were stated by name and accused of acts that would most definitely get them fired. Teachers are also private citizens, although they open themselves up by becoming a teacher to student judgment. But does when the student fact judgment that they are goes a coach too far, affect their public figure, yes. counsel, these gym teachers are also coaches on local teams. Does that affect their public status? No, that still makes them private citizens because anyone could volunteer or sign up for a job to be a coach or a teacher. Yet these coaches could make statements in the paper reflecting their school and their sports team. That opens them up to more libel, does it not? I think they can make statements in the paper about their sports team. I don't think they can make statements in the paper or media about their own personal life. The fact that these teachers were stated by name um, helps this, the two threats of I'm going to hit you with my Ruger and I'm going to get a pistol down your mouth, that helps them pass the true threat test. These statements directed towards the teachers are threats because the, li the listeners were apprehensive to teach the student and actually feared for their safety. This threat was not conditional because the rap shows the statement as a form of, re of revenge for alleged acts. So how would this rap song be different than all the others that are that mention the same things such as like drugs, violence, vulgar, vulgar language? How is this song different? This rap is different because Taylor Bell admitted to posting the rap in intending to reach the school community and raise awareness for his for what he had heard as alleged misconduct. If the student question posted it on a bulletin or a newspaper or even put on sticky notes and hand it out to school students, would that be a more acceptable form? No. Of? If, as long as they use the teacher by name, that is defaming and threatening the teachers. Even if it is in a newspaper and you wrote a report on it? Even then, I do believe the newspapers will get in trouble because teachers are private citizens and they don't have access to the media. Wouldn't these stories be significant enough to post a new story, such as about teacher and student misconduct happened? Is that the information to the teacher if it happened by proper news source? No, I don't believe that is defamation to the teacher because police were involved and that means there was substantial evidence. There was no evidence and these were alleged allegations and accusations. The threat was also not directly communicated to the teachers, but the defendant stated that he intended for the rap to re reach the school community. 
When Bell made several threatening statements to the victims is unclear. However, the propensity is there. These two statements are considered to be tr true threats be because of the way the victims took them and because of where it happened and that they stated the two names of the teachers. Didn't it happen in the privacy of his own home, correct? Yes, it did happen in the privacy of his own home. However, he intended for it to reach the school community, and it did. So, and the fact that they were accessed on school computers during the school day is a substantial disruption. Could you punish other students uh, if, like, they accessed it, even if, like, you know, they didn't want to, like, and they, like, shared it with another student? Could you punish them? I don't think you could punish other students if they accessed it. According to the court's decision in Tinker, schools have a right to ban free speech if it causes or could likely cause a substantial disruption. In this case, there was a substantial disruption due to the fact that students could and did access the RAP online with school computers. With students distracted and teachers fearing for their lives and safety, the speech had to be banned because the purpose of a school is to teach, to promote social well-being as well as democratic well-being, and not provide platforms for pure speech. Also, the precedent in Bethel shows the schools have a right to put sanctions on speech because, again, its purpose is not to pr provide platforms for pure speech, but to teach subjects that are appropriate for the age of the students. The RAP's promotion of drugs and gun violence are pure speech, but the school community is not the required or the right platform for it. Does the RAP harm, um, does the, RAP harm the school itself or just the te teachers that are like listed in it? I believe it harms just the teachers that are written in it and stated by name. So as you can see, these threats are true threats and they state the teachers by name and it causes a substantial disruption. The school does have the right to ban this free speech from a high school student. That is all the time you have. Thank you, Council. We will take the matter under advisement.